for the last 71 years, we've watched some of the greatest moments in sports history. Celtics now lead 45, and West with a long jump, Russell deflected it and keeps it. Beautiful play. Feeds off quickly to Havlicek, who's been guarded by Krebs, who is holding back. Goes up, they jump long. Kuzi throws it high in the air, and the Boston Celtics are the world champion. Oscar Robertson throws to Kareem. Seven seconds. Kareem with a big shot. setting something up with Larry Bird, who gets it low. What's a move on Byron Scott? What a move by Larry Bird. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven. Or from championship number six. Jordan. Chicago with the lead! It's Kobe again. But what if we went all the way back and redid it? Today is the year 1955. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of NBA 2K History Resimulation. Hope you guys are enjoying this ep this series. If you are, please do so. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. It really does help out the channel if you guys like and comment. Helps the YouTube algorithm see my video, share it out to a bunch of people, and hey, maybe you know we can do this more often. So if you guys could do me a favor, do those two things. I would really, really appreciate it. We just hit 6,000 subscribers, so thank you guys for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. That is awesome. So real quick, if you guys have missed the first couple of episodes or if you guys just want a refresher, okay, uh, in the comments or not in the comments, in the description, I do have a link to a Google Sheets page. You can, if you guys click on that, you guys will see the history. So in one tab, I have all the years. And the next step, I have MVP, Rookie of the Year, Defense Player of the Year, Six Man of the Year, Scoring Title. And then I have NBA Finals winner, NBA Finals loser, the series, and you know how it finished, 4-3, 4-2, 4-3, whatever. Uh, and then NBA Finals MVP, and then some notes where you know I kind of fill in certain things. So if you guys think I should add something or put something in certain years for the notes, let me know in the comments below because at the end, we want to take all of this, right, and figure out, okay, who is our top five or top 10 greatest players of all time? Like, that's the goal of this series, right? To kind of figure out if we re-simulated history, like, what would happen, right? Who would we consider the greatest of all time? So, uh, if you guys want, go in the description. You can check that out. Uh, and it's awesome because you can filter this out. So, by the end, you can filter out, like, you know, who won the most finals, who won the most MVPs. And it's really cool how we can do that. So, um, let's go ahead, go over real quick. George Mikan dominated the first four years. He won MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. But since then, Paul Arizon has won back-to-back -back MVPs. He has won three straight scoring titles. He's won the last Defensive Player of the Year. So he's been really good. Bob Pettit won Rookie of the Year. So he's on his way, right? And then uh, obviously the Celtics being the NBA Finals, uh, not the Celtics, the Rochester Royals being the uh, the reigning champions where they beat the Boston Celtics in five. We got the Nationals, the Lakers twice, the Knicks twice, and now the Royals who have become the fourth franchise to win a championship. Now we only have eight teams. So we'll see if we can, you know, it'll be interesting to see if like we have any big dynasties, right? Like the Celtics or anything like that. So also in this video, Bill Russell comes into the league. Casey Jones comes into the league. So we, we've got some, some really good players coming into the league here. So again, if you guys are excited about that, 
hit that like button also comment below who are you guys excited about and do you guys think we get like an 11 straight or not 11 straight but eight straight finals you know winners like let me know like what do you guys think do we get any crazy dynasties and if so who do you think it will be but let's get on to the offseason red holzman retires as well as a, a couple other players but no serious injuries like we had earlier so those are the only retirements no hall of famers or or anything like that on to the 1955 nba draft the detroit Pistons or the fort wayne pistons had the worst record in the league once again. They actually pass on Maurice Stokes. But they go ahead and draft Kenny Sears. Interesting. Uh, Maurice Stokes goes to the Warriors. Uh, Twyman goes to the Nationals. Garmaker goes to the Royals. Gala goes to the Celtics. So an interesting draft. We'll see, uh, we'll see if that works out for the Fort Wayne Pistons. I mean, they've been one of the worst teams forever. And they have Bob Cousy. So they got to figure something out. On to free agency, and I think this might be a, a decent year where we actually have some movement here. Uh, maybe not. Okay, I thought maybe there was a chance because I saw how many players, but looks like they're all resigning. Yeah, uh, just, okay, so Dick McGuire went to a no, so I'll, I will go ahead and put whoever signs on a no team, I'll end up putting them back on their original team where they were as if they resigned. So uh, Slater Martin will return to the Lakers. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot of movement. Uh, Jim Pollard goes to the Royals, leaves the Lakers. Chuck Scher stays with the Pistons. Chuck Cooper stays with the Royals. So not a whole lot of movement. A lot of these players will be back on their teams. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought maybe there would be some movement here at the top. Uh, but doesn't look like it. Vern Mickelson stays with the Lakers. George Mikan stays with the Lakers. So nothing too interesting. 1955-1956 NBA season is over, and Bob Cousy is your MVP. 28 points, 9 rebounds, 11 assists, a steal per game. And uh, I'm assuming the Pistons are actually good this year, which is great for him. Maurice Stokes wins Rookie of the Year, averaging 15 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists. Remember, he was a second overall pick. Carl Braun, 22 points, 5 rebounds, 6.5 assists. He's your sixth man of the year. Defensive player of the year is Paul Arizon, once again, 28, 11, and 6. 1.8 steals, 0.5 a block, so he wins back-to-back DPO-wise. Gene Shu is the most improved, averaging 12, 5, and 3. And clutch player of the year is Bob Cousy. So, I'm assuming they won a lot of games. Bob Cousy on the All-NBA First Team, Bro on the All-NBA First Team, Gallatin, Paul Arizon, and Faust. But Paul Arizon is out for the next four to six weeks with the left... Uh, pulled left calf muscle. Uh, he might play. I don't know if he's out out, but I think the red like symbol, I think there's a yellow symbol and a red symbol. I think the red symbol means he's out out. So that's a huge loss for the Boston Celtics. They lost their back to back MVP and three time or two time DPOY for most of the playoffs, which is really tough for them. Carl Braun is also injured, but he's day to day. Bill Sharman, Carl Braun, Bob Pettit, 21, 14, and 4. George, George Yardley and Arnie Risen on that second team. Third team is Richie Guerin, George King, Vernon Mickelson, Dolph Shays, and Walter Dukes. All defensive first team got Bob Cousy, Fred Scolari, Paul Arizon, George Yardley, and Larry Faust. Paul, and let's see how many games Paul Arizon played. Because I'm curious how long he's been out. Uh, wow, he got injured at the very end of the year. He played 80 games. Oh, man, had 51 double-doubles, 8 triple-doubles. Wow. Second team, we got Paul Seymour, Jerry Rulo, Jack Nichols, Bob Pettit, and George Mikan. So, let's take a look at the league leaders here. With Harry Gallatin leading the league in scoring, Paul Arizon was second, tied with Bob Cousy. Uh, rebounds per game was Larry Faust with 15 Skeleton with 14.9, 11 assists for Kuzi. So he was, what, tied for second in scoring and first in assists. Pretty good. Uh, Paul Arizon led the league in steals, and Joe Grabowski led the league in, I guess, well, he's not on. Oh, he's not on an actual team, unfortunately. Shoot. Okay. Uh, we're going to see some, quote-unquote, real players be on no teams. Because the draft classes that I'm downloading are actually really good. But that's also the problem because there's too many players. So we can't 
we're filling the rosters of the real teams so yeah we're gonna have to kind of figure that out i'm probably gonna start really shortening the amount of players in the draft class even if they're real players like we're just gonna if they did nothing in real life they're gonna end up doing nothing in, in this right so we'll probably start to kind of limit it so we don't have that problem but you know that's just that's how it goes if you guys have any other ideas let me know but i think that's the best way to do it the milwaukee ox do not make the playoffs so the lakers are the one seed in the west rochester and philly are the two and three seeds in the west and then the knicks are the one seed the celtics are the two seed the pistons were the third seed with bob Cousy winning the mvp and the syracuse nationals as the four seed so let's see what happens here in round one as the royals the new york knicks and the boston celtics have been eliminated and bob Cousy has led the pistons to the conference finals as well as obviously the knicks is a one seed losing which is a tough tough loss for them and uh, check out the warriors with bob pettit uh making it to the conference finals as well so could we be seeing the rivalry of bob pettit versus bob Cousy? we shall see game number one the warriors and the nationals win those games and the Fort, Fort Wayne Pistons have been eliminated 2-0. The Lakers tied up the series, and they will move on to the NBA Finals. Vern Mickelson, 22-6-4 in the Conference Finals. Bob Cousy, 31-10 in the Conference Finals. Uh, They gave him, wow, they gave him Conference Finals MVP and lost. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, Dolph Shays. Yeah, Red Roca on this uh, Nationals team. Let's take a look at the starters here. Uh, Fred Scolari, Paul Seymour, Earl Lloyd, Dolph Shays, and Red Roca. For the Lakers, it's George King, Bob Harrison, Jack Molinas, Vern Mickelson, and George Mikan, who's down to an 86 overall. This could be George Mikan's final run here. Obviously, he has the four MVPs, the four Defensive Player of the Year awards, He's 2-1 in the NBA Finals, lost two years ago, uh, but he does have two Finals MVPs. The Nationals are back into the NBA Finals for the first time since 1952, where they lost to the Lakers. Remember, they were the first ever NBA champions when Dolph Shays won Finals MVP. So here we go. On to game number one. The Lakers do have home court advantage, but the Nationals lead it by 10 after one by eight at the half. Now into the fourth quarter, they're up by 13 and down to two and a half minutes. They're up by just nine. 41 seconds up by seven. That will do it. The Nationals win it 101 to 94. Slater Martin had 23 in the loss. Dolph Shays with 20, 13, and three. Roca with 18 and seven. Hugh Brooks with 15. Lloyd with 14. Hanum with 10 so on to game two with the nationals taking home court advantage the lakers will lead it by eight after one now they're they're pulling away by 19 at the half although the nationals won the third by 10 they cut the lead to 11 but i don't think it's going to be enough the lakers win game two 112 to 98 slater martin had 30 george mikan with 22 7 and 2 Vern mickelson with 16 and 5 lloyd had 20 16 4 Dolph Shays. By the way, real quick, the in-season tournament is uh, today. We're starting. I'm recording this on the 16th. I think I should get this up today as well. Let me know your guys' predictions. Pelicans, Lakers, who do you guys think wins? And uh, I believe the game tonight is Warriors, Kings. I'm going, you know, I know the, the, the Lakers kicked the Pelicans' ass in the final game of the season. But a lot of times when you see teams play back to back they actually split pelicans are at home my gut says the pelicans and maybe that's just as a nuggets fan i'd rather see the pelicans than the lakers because even though i think the nuggets would win in five against the lakers it would be a really tough five maybe even six right it'd be a hard six right or a hard five whereas the pelicans i think it would be four or five and I think you get a couple blowouts in there, right? Which benefits, obviously, the Nuggets. So as a Nuggets fan, I am rooting for the Pelicans, but just my gut says the Pelicans win. I don't know. Maybe that's just me as a Nuggets fan. 
Uh, between the Warriors and Kings, the Kings just don't have Monk and, and Huter. I'm going to go with, with the Warriors. So those are my predictions for the West. The East, I think it's Miami-Philly, right? Philly at home. I think Philly wins. And I think Miami beats whoever gets out of the 9-10. So I, I'll have it Philly at 7 and um, the Heat at 8. And then I'm going to have a separate video of my NBA predictions, my playoff predictions. So uh, let me know in the comments below what are your guys' predictions. But anyways, let's get back to... Uh, this here as the Lakers have an early lead, 26-22 after one. The Nationals have taken the lead back though in the second half. And with four and a half minutes to go, they lead it by 11. A minute to, yeah, they're they're winning this one. 119-101. Mickelson at 32, not enough as Earl Lloyd had 29. Dolph Shays with 29 as well. And they take a 2-1 series lead. The Lakers are in danger of going down 3-1. And, but they're up huge. Oh my. A huge second quarter for them. A big third quarter, and that will do it. 124 to 98. The Lakers have tied up this series. Vern Mickelson turning into a just monster here in the finals. Even though his playoff numbers weren't that good, he was huge in this one. 34, 4, and 3. Slater Martin with 21. Mikan with 20, 10, and 4. And we have a tied series on to game five back in minneapolis the lakers with a nine point lead now a three point lead after the first half and they look like they're controlling things here although the nationals are coming back down to three minutes ago they have a four point lead uh, only a two point lead now do i want to jump in here it's so hard to come back when you don't have a three point shot yeah no 118 110 the lakers will take a series lead george mikan 32 6 three steals two blocks Vern mickelson with 20 10 and 6 a huge game there Dolph chase with 30 and 5 and the lakers have taken a 3-2 series lead headed back to syracuse the lakers down by one after one but they've taken a three-point lead at the half now into the fourth quarter they lead it by eight with 324 to go they lead it by 13 and Oh, dang it. I didn't stop in time. The Minneapolis Lakers are NBA champions. They were down 2-1 in this series. They come back, win two straight to end it. 124-103 is the final score. They win in six games. Vern Mickelson, I think, is going to be your finals MVP. 31-7-5, two steals, two blocks in a closeout game. George Mikan at 22-6-5. And, and the Minneapolis Lakers are now the all-time leader in finals wins they pass the new york knicks who tied them a couple years ago by beating them by the way the lakers are now three and one in the nba finals and yep there you go Vern mickelson is your finals mvp 24 points per game six rebounds 3.8 assists 1.8 steals and 2.3 blocks shooting 63 percent from the field so on to the 1956 NBA draft and Bill Russell goes to the Milwaukee Hawks. He is the number one overall pick with the number two overall pick. The Syracuse Nationals select Casey Jones with the third overall pick. The Fort Wayne Pistons will take Willie Nulls at four. The Warriors will take Tom Henson and Cy Green will go to Boston. Uh, the Knicks will take Steve Halber, and we'll go ahead and sim the rest here and take a look. Uh, John Barber goes to the Royals. Jim Paxson goes to the Lakers. So those are the picks. Very interesting. The Milwaukee Hawks, they get Bill Russell. The Nationals get KC Jones. I'm curious to look at those teams real quick um, because, yeah, I mean, the Nationals have Dolph Shays, which... Obviously, they're gonna be they're gonna be pretty good. Dolph Shays, Red Roca, Scalari, now Casey Jones. That's that's a pretty good pairing. Uh, and then for the Milwaukee Hawks, uh, they add Bill Russell to Larry Faust, Frankie Bryan, Jack Nichols, Cliff Hagen. It's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. In free agency, Clyde Lovelett returns to the Pistons as well as Mel Hutchins, so they get two big pieces back. Eddie Miller will head to the Lakers from, or head to Knicks from the Lakers. Earl Lloyd will head from the Nationals to the Lakers. So a couple of, of small moves as uh, Otten will head to the Nationals as well. So 
interesting. We'll see how that changes the landscape of uh, of this upcoming season. Bob Cousy is your uh, regular season MVP here for 1957-1958, averaging 27, 9, and 10 per game. Bill Russell is your rookie of the year, averaging 13, 13, two assists, two blocks, and a steal. Maurice Stokes is your sixth man of the year, 16, 9, and 4. Bill Russell also wins defensive player of the year as a rookie. Kenny Sears is your most improved player and clutch player of the year is Vern Mickelson coming off of a finals MVP. He averaged 28, 13 and four. He had a really, really good year. All NBA first team, Bob Cousy, Rich Guerin, Vern Mickelson, Bob Pettit, who averaged 23, 13 and five and Walter Dukes on the all NBA second team. Got Carl Braun, Grote, Paul Arizon, Harry Gallatin and Arnie Risen. Paul Arizon, 27, 12 and five per game. All NBA third team got Paul Seymour. George King, who is day-to-day -day injured for the Lakers, Cliff Hagen, Dolph Shays, who's also uh, injured for the next two to four weeks, but he should be playing at least. And Larry Faust is your all-NBA third team center. All-defensive first team, we got Bob Cousy, uh, a no-name, Paul Arizon, and Bill Russell. Uh, and then for your all-defensive second team, we got Bob Pettit and Arnie Risen. So on to the league leaders here. Your leading scorer was Bob Cousy, uh, or actually, no, it wasn't. It was Vern Mickelson, who played less games, but he is your leading scorer, 75 games played. 13 rebounds for him as well, uh, as it was Harry Gallatin, who led the league in rebounds per game. Bob Cousy led the league in assists per game. Grote led the league in steals per game. And for blocks per game, it was Bill Russell, who led the league in blocks per game in his rookie year on to round one of the playoffs the milwaukee hawks have been eliminated so were the nationals and the defending champions the minneapolis lakers who were the third seed in the west so in the conference finals we've got the philadelphia warriors who were the one seed in the west the rochester royals who were the two seed in the west the fort wayne pistons who ended up being the number one seed in the east and the boston celtics let's take a look at some of the rosters so you guys know what kind of what's going on here uh, Gene uh, Melchor, he is the starting point guard with Ernie Beck, George Yardley, Bob Pettit, and Neil Johnson. Maurice Stokes coming off the bench. Remember, he won sixth man of the year. And then for the Warriors, uh, or not for the Royals, got Grote, Guerin, Chuck Cooper, Jack Coleman, and Arnie Risen. I think Philly is probably going to win that. For the Pistons, you got Bob Cousy, Frank Ramsey, Fred Shaws, Mel Hutchins, and Red Kirk. Clive I love that is coming off the bench along with Chuck Share and Kenny Sears uh, for the Boston Celtics. Got Andy Phillip, Don Sutterledge, Paul Arizon, Ed McLay, Walter Duke. So got a couple of big time stars, right? Paul Arizon, Bob Cousy trying to win their first title along with Bob Pettit. We'll see what happens. Game one goes to the Warriors and the Fort Wayne Pistons. Game two goes to the Fort Wayne Pistons and Bob Cousy, who just won his first MVP, just made it to his first NBA Finals. The Rochester Royals type the series with the Warriors and they come back after losing the first game to winning 2-1. Richie Guerin, 27-5 and 4, Bob Cousy, 29-6 and 8, and they are on to the NBA Finals. So here are your starting lineups. Bob Cousy, Frank Ramsey, Fred Shaws, Mel Hutchins, and Red Kerr for the Fort Wayne Pistons. For the Rochester Royals, you got Dick Grote, Richie Guerin, Chuck Cooper, Jack Coleman, and Arnie Risen. Can Bob Cousy get his first NBA championship? We shall see. Here we go. Game one, the Royals do have home court advantage, and they are crushing the Pistons right now. It's, yeah, this is going to be a blowout. I mean, the Pistons trying to come back here. It doesn't matter. They won the second half and still lost by 16. 139 to 123. No defense in this game. Rich Gearing had 35, 5, and 3. Grote with 23, 4, and 6. Only Risen with 20, 11, and 6, along with 5 of blocks. The thing is, Grote is a really good defender, right? He led the league in steals, and he's guarding Bob Cousy. It's a tough matchup, actually, for the Pistons. 35, I mean, he still had 35, 8, and 9, but... 11 of 23 from the field and six turnovers for Bob Cousy. On to game number two, 
once again in Rochester. A six point lead after one and a four, 15 point lead at the half. It's not looking good for the Pistons. I mean, they're trying to make a late run here in the fourth. It doesn't matter. 130 to 112 is your final score. Rich Guerin with 33, 7 and 5 and 4 steals. Grote had 34 and 7. 19 for Felix. Kerr had 25 and 9. Kuzi had 16 and 15. Did not shoot well. Shoot well and another four turnovers. Yikes. Not a good series here for Bob Kuzi. But can he turn it around at home now? They had an 11 point lead at the ha at, after one, but they lost it at the half. And. I mean, a good fourth quarter. They've taken the lead back 101 96. Can they hold on here or will the Royals make it close? It's a four point game, a two point game, back to a four point game, and that will do it. The Fort Wayne Pistons win game three, make it a 2 1 series. Gearing at 28 7 and 5, eight steals in the loss. Bob Cousy at 25 8 and 9. Mel Hutchins had 21 3 and 5. Red Kerr was 17 and 7 along with five blocks, but the key, only two turn turnovers for Bob Cousy. He's got to take care of the ball if they want to win this series. On to game four, once again in Fort Wayne, a good start here for the Pistons. They're up by four after one. At the half, they're down by two, and the Royals, they're up by eight now here late in the fourth, and that's going to do it. The Rochester Royals have taken a 3-1 series lead. 107-102 is the final score. Richie Guerin, 30 points, 6 boards, 4 assists. He's awesome. Awesome. Frank Ramsey with 21. Bob Cousy, 5 turnovers. Shot 5 of 11, only at 12 points. He's got to be better. He's got to be better. The Royals have now taken a 3-1 series lead. No team has come back from a 3-1 series deficit here in the NBA Finals. So on a two game five in Rochester, the Royals with a six point lead after one, eight, an eight point lead after the half. But now it's just a two point lead going into the fourth quarter. They started off the fourth quarter. Wow. OK, well, now they're up by 10. Yeesh. Uh, the Pistons have come back. 102-102. We're going. Oh, uh, the Royals went on a little bit of a run there. A big run. They're up by six now. Up by five. Yikes. All right, up by four. Let's jump in with 43 seconds to go. The Royals up by four here, but the Fort Wayne Pistons do have possession. So ball is in to Bob Cousy. Cousy, a good defense, man. The Royals have done a great job guarding Cousy. Cousy gets around, puts up a floater. It's good. 33.7 seconds to go. The Pistons do not have to foul. They're only down by two. Cooper bringing it up. Full court pressure from the Pistons. They get it across nearly a uh, uh, half court violation there. Felix now with it. 10 seconds to go. Back over to Arnie Risen. Risen swinging it over to Felix. Back to Risen. Mikan has it. Back to Risen. They're swinging it. A bad shot. No good. Rebound to Shaws. Over to Kuzi. Three on the clock. Two. Kuzi, pull up jumper. He ties it. 0.3 seconds to go. What a shot from Bob Kuzi. Oh my. We're going to overtime. What a shot from Bob Kuzi to tie up this game at 114. Ball is in and no good. We are headed to overtime what a comeback for the Fort Wayne Pistons Bob Cousy scores the final four points there to tie up the game and trying to avoid losing his first NBA Finals let's jump into the simcast here I'm going to slow this down we got five minutes here who will win this game the Royals could win their second NBA championship and second in three years the Pistons could win their first also on the line, the Royals are 1-2 in the finals. They could lose their third record-setting, third finals in NBA history. Here we go. No scoring until the Pistons finally take a lead with a minute and a half. Now a four-point lead. It's back down to a two-point lead. 57 seconds to go. Let's jump back in here. The Royals do have possession. Down by two with 57 seconds to go. Pass in to Wanzer. 
and they're going to call a timeout. All right, so 54 seconds to go in this game, 21 seconds on the shot clock here as, as the Pistons lead it by two, 120 to 118. This would be a massive win for the Fort Wayne Pistons because they would head back home for game six. Nice pass to Risen, and Risen can't make the little hook shot there. Foul on Kerr, and Risen will hit the first free throw. Second free throw to tie up this game is good. 48 seconds to go. The Pistons will call a timeout each team with one remaining timeout. I mean, if this ball doesn't go to Bob Cousy, I'd be shocked, right? 48 seconds to go. Ball in to Hutchins. Will they get it to Bob Cousy here? Hutchins will get a screen from Roca and or to Kerr and Kerr puts it up no good gets the offensive rebound puts it back up and it hits it 122 to 120 the Pistons with a two-point lead 34 on the clock the Royals with 15 get in the post of Risen Risen good Kerr got lost there and Risen had an easy shot and this game's all tied up at 122 27 seconds to go. Hutchins with the ball. He's going to take this clock all the way down here. 15 on the shot clock now. About a four second differential here. They're going to get it to... No, I thought they were going to get it for Kuzi here. Five seconds. They don't get it to Kuzi. Hutchins drives right. Puts it up. No, what a pass to Kerr who dunks it with five seconds to go. Oh my, what a pass! And Red Kerr with an easy dunk. What a play by Hutchins. But he did leave time. Five seconds to go. Here we go. Three, two, risen, jumper, no good! And the Pistons avoid losing the NBA Finals. And they cut this series lead down to one here it's three two for the royals back to fort wayne bob Cousy ended up having 34 points nine rebounds five assists kerr had 17 six and six hutchins I, only 10 seven and six but he made the biggest play of the game i i mean that was a hell of a pass so on to game six fort wayne at home and after one, they have a one-point lead. Another high-scoring game at the half. They lead it by four. And the Royals, what a run here in the third quarter. 21-9 to nine run. They lead it by 12. And that will give them, wow, an 18-point lead in the third quarter. That's a 14-point lead in total. The Pistons might have choked here. It's over. The Rochester Royals are NBA champions for the second time in three years. 134 to 122 is the final score. Richie Guerin with 28 and 5. He's probably your finals MVP, although Arnie Risen had a really good game, 25, 8, and 8. But Richie Guerin had, had a just a heck of a series. Fresh shots with 20 points. Uh Cozy played 13 minutes. Did he get hurt or did he foul out? He had six fouls in 13 minutes. What? Wow. Yikes. The Rochester Royals are NBA champions. Rich Guerin with the finals MVP, 28.7 points, six rebounds, four assists, his first finals MVP. The Royals win at their second NBA championship. On to the 1957 NBA draft, and with the number one overall pick, it's kind of a surprise, and the New York Knicks, who had the worst record in the league, will take Sam Jones. So the Knicks had the number one overall pick. It goes Knicks, Nationals, Hawks, Celtics, Lakers, Pistons, Royals, Warriors. I go by record, so even if you know the Royals won the championship, they still get the seventh pick. I just go by record to make it easy. Uh, and then there are nine players in this draft, so the Knicks will get two picks. All right, at number two, the Syracuse Nationals. They select Hot Rod Hundley. At third, Woody Salisbury. At four, 
It will be the Celtics who are taking George Bonsal. The Lakers take Jim Krebs. I'm not sure. I'm not sure so who some of these guys are. Again, like this is kind of different. I don't usually have this many players in these drafts. Like in this one, I usually would only have like two or three. Um, but we have nine. So we'll see how it goes. But Sam Jones, who's an 81 overall, heads to New York. Not a lot of changes here in free agency as there were just a lot of restricted free agents. Um, but yeah, so not much here. Ray Felix stays with the Royals. Uh, there have been a couple of team name changes. So the Fort Wayne Pistons are now the Detroit Pistons. The Rochester Royals moved to Cincinnati. So they are now the Cincinnati Royals. And then the Milwaukee Hawks are no longer in Milwaukee. They have moved to St. Louis, which actually should have happened a year ago, I think. But uh, we've moved the St. Louis, uh, the Milwaukee Hawks to St. Louis. All right, so those are the big changes in the offseason. We'll see what happens. Bob Cousy wins his third straight regular season MVP, averaging 28, 9, and 10. He's got to get it done in the finals, though. Woody Salisbury wins Rookie of the Year, averaging just seven points. Wow. Was there really no one else worthy of that? That's um, that's kind of crazy. All right. Uh, Larry Faust wins Sixth Man of the Year. Bill Russell wins DPOY, 17-4. Look how many. Hawk, three straight Hawks players. The Hawks better be good. Kenny Sears with most improved, and Bob Cousy is your clutch player of the year. He is injured with a broken nose, but he should be fine. So he's on the first team along with Richie Guerin, who's your finals MVP. He put up 26, 9, and 5 this year. Bob Pettit with the Philadelphia Warriors, putting up 25, 14, and 5. Cliff Hagen with the Hawks, averaging 25, 11, and 6. And Walter Dukes with the Celtics, averaging 23, 11, and 3. Pretty good. On base second team, we got George King, Carl Braun, Vernon Mickelson, Paul Arizon putting up 27, 12, and 7, and Bill Russell putting up 17, 14, and 2.4 blocks per game. Third team, we got Grote, Beck, Gallatin, Dolph Shays, and Neil Johnson. All defensive first team, we got Kuzi, Pettit, and Russell. Uh, Paul Seymour, Seymour, Vern Mickelson, Neil Johnson on the all defensive second team. Looking at the league leaders this year, Bob Cousy did lead the league in scoring with 28.3. Paul Arizon was second, only played 58 games though. Richie Guerin averaged 26 a game. Rebounds per game, uh, I believe, let's see. Uh, Bob Pettit led the league in rebounds per game. Bob Cousy led the league in assists per game. Paul Arizon led the league in steals per game. And Bill Russell led the league in blocks per game. By the way, the, I put it in the rules. Um, you can actually change to where there is no limit on games played for awards. So that's why Paul Arizon was on the All-NBA second team, even though he only played 58 games. I will activate that later on. So yeah, that's something to look out for. But anyways, on to the playoffs here. The Cincinnati Royals were the number one seed in the West. The St. Louis Hawks are actually the one seed in the East. Interesting. All right. Uh, and then, let's see. The Pistons were third. The Knicks were second. Man, I, the Hawks were good. The Hawks were really good. They got Gene Shu, Frankie Bryan, Cliff Hagen, Bill Russell, and Larry Faust. Interesting. All right. Well, let's see what happens here as we head on to the conference finals. The New York Knicks, the Syracuse Nationals, Minneapolis Lakers are all eliminated. So, we could still have a repeat here as Cincinnati, now the Royals in Cincinnati, no longer in Rochester. And both teams in the finals actually moved cities, which is kind of funny. Uh, the Pistons as well. So, we got the Royals versus the Warriors. The Royals with Groat, Guerin, Chuck Cooper, Coleman, and Arnie Risen with Ray Felix coming off the bench. For the Warriors, they got Gene Moshore, Ernie Beck, George Yardley, Bob Pettit, and Neil Johnson. Will Bob Pettit finally break through for the Hawks they got Gene Shu, Frankie Bryan, Cliff Hagen, Bill Russell and Larry Faust and for the Pistons Bob Cousy, Frank Ramsey, Fred Shaws, Mel Hutchins, Red Curb and Clyde Lovelett coming off the bench. Game one goes to the Warriors and the Pistons. Game number two the St. Louis Hawks have been eliminated and the Detroit Pistons are headed to their second straight NBA Finals. The Cincinnati Royals have been eliminated. We will no longer have a back-to-back -back champion. Bob Pettit breaks through 
20, 11, and 8. Two and a half blocks, one and a half steals in the conference finals. Kuzi with 32, 4, and 10 with one and a half steals. And the two Bobs. Here we go. Bob Pettit versus Bob Kuzi in the NBA Finals. Here is your starting five. Kuzi. Oh, someone got hurt for the Pistons. I think. I don't remember Floyd starting. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, for the Warriors, they are all healthy. They're ready to go. For the Pistons, they... Let's see. Clyde Lovelace is injured and Frank Ramsey is out for one to two weeks. That's a big injury. Interesting. Okay. I, the Warriors immediately have an advantage here. We will see what happens. The Pistons trying not to lose two straight championships. The Warriors are trying to win their first as it is their first ever appearance. So they could become the fifth franchise to win an NBA. Both teams. Actually, no matter what, we're going to get the uh, fifth franchise to win an NBA championship. The Warriors do have home court. They lead it by 13 after one. The Pistons trying to come back here, make it a 10-point game at the half. A seven-point game going to the fourth. But the Warriors pulling away here, and they win it 114 to 103. Bob Pettit with 20, 10, and 3. Henson with 28 and 6. And uh, Bukuzi had 26, 6, and 9 with 3 steals. So the Warriors take game number one. On to game number two. As at the half, the Warriors with a four point lead. Only a two point lead going into the fourth quarter, and a big fourth quarter. For the Detroit Pistons, as they will win it 86 to 81. A lot of defense in this series. Kuzi with 16, Pettit with 16 and 9. Interesting. All right. Game number three. Detroit at home. They've they were able to get a split on the road. So they have home court advantage now. The Warriors, they're they're blowing them out. Can the Pistons come back here? It's only a seven-point game now. The Pistons coming back. They've come all the way back, just down by four now. They've tied it. Two and a half minutes to go, down to a minute and six, and the Warriors have pulled away. And the Philadelphia Warriors win game three. They take home court back 117 to 105. Bob Pettit with 24, 12, and 8 uh, in the win. Ooh, Kuzi's hurt. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait. Was he already hurt? I can't remember now. 23. I don't think so. 23, 8, and 12. He played 37 minutes. It's not a serious injury, but something to look at here as, let's see, the Pistons. No, he's good. Oh, wait, that's the wrong team. Uh, he is injured. Lower back bruise. He's day-to-day, -day, but he loses two overall. That's a big injury, man. Richie uh, or Frank Ramsey still out one to two weeks, so we'll see when he's able to come back, if he, if at all. But now game four with the Pistons down a 2-1 and Kuzi a little injured here. And the Warriors are taking advantage. Into the fourth quarter, they lead it big. And that will do it. The Philadelphia Warriors take game four. They've taken a 3-1 series lead. 128-109. to 33-10-5 for Bob Pettit. 26-5-5 for Yardley. Kuzi struggled as he is injured. Kerr with 19-6. And, and it's a 3-1 series lead for the Philadelphia Warriors. And now on to... Game number five, the Warriors with a big lead again. That's going to do it, man. Uh, let's jump in and watch the final. What? Let's watch the end. But the Warriors will be your fifth NBA franchise to win an NBA title. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. And that will do it. The Philadelphia Warriors are NBA champions for the first time in franchise history. They win game five, 110 to 98. Bob Pettit. In, uh, I mean, what year is this for Pettit? One, two, three, four, five? No, four. In year four, wins his first NBA championship. Bob Cousy, who's won three straight regular season MVPs, now falls to 0 2 in the NBA Finals. He's not winning another MVP until he wins. I, I'm going to start. I'm going to interfere on MVPs um, if they start winning and winning them too much, right? Kind of, kind of like in real life. So 
We'll see what happens. But there you go. Bob Pettit is an NBA champion. His first. And he will be your finals MVP. The Warriors are NBA champions. They're their fifth franchise to win an NBA title. Bob Pettit, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 2.6 blocks per game, and 1, assist, one steal per game in the final shooting 60% from the field. So... Bob Pettit, pretty good start to his career. I mean, Rookie of the Year, All-NBA teams, and now a Finals MVP. That's tough for Bob Cousy, man. I mean, to lose two straight after winning three regular season MVPs, he did get injured in Game 3. He did still play, but it obviously affected the Pistons. They also lost... Um, uh, who did they lose again? I mean, it's just tough luck, right? I mean, Frank Ramsey... Uh, which I believe he actually, oh man, he was an important player, dude. I mean, 22.8 points in the, in the playoffs. Like he's in, a, he was an important player and not having him in the, in the finals. That's, you know, that's disappointing. It's really, really disappointing. Um, does it show recent games here? Yeah. He, uh, he never played in the finals. He's ready to go now. It's too late. But injuries killed the, the Pistons. Wow. All right. Well, that's how... Uh, the injuries make it interesting, man. The injuries make it interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button if you guys did. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Comment down below what you guys think about the injuries. What do you guys think about Bob Cousy? And, and also the MVP thing. What do you guys think? Um, he's won three straight. Even if 2K gives it to him, I'm going to give it to somebody else. George Mikan holds the record for four straight. So we'll see. But I am going to interfere. I'm not going to let someone win, you know, five, six, seven straight. Like, that's just not going to happen. Mikan probably won't win more than four, right? Because he's done. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Also, if you guys are interested in, in the description, there is this Google Sheets link. Click on that and it'll take you to uh, kind of what's happened. You guys can see and, and year by year who's won what awards and, and, you know, the finals and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested, hope you guys enjoyed though. And I will see you guys in 1958.